Do you want to become a HubSpot consultant? Maybe you're already using HubSpot at work and wondering if you can turn that into a business or you are a service provider thinking about adding HubSpot to your services. Either way, I've been there. I went from struggling to find a job in digital marketing during the pandemic to building my own HubSpot consulting business in just a few months. So in this video, I'll break down exactly how you can become an independent HubSpot consultant too, step by step. Let's get started. What's your vision? First things first, what do you envision when you see yourself as a HubSpot consultant? Look, in my case, I was having a hard time finding a job during the pandemic. Actually, Actually, we had just moved to a new country and my plan was to work full-time, you know, in, in, in marketing department for a startup, something like that, as I had always done in my life. The problem is that as companies were not hiring, I found myself in a tricky situation. Sometime after, I decided to experiment with positioning myself as a marketer with HubSpot experience. And this is how I found my first clients. I've always wanted to work for myself, have flexible working hours and work from home. Becoming a HubSpot consultant helped me achieve all that. Make sure that you envision your ideal lifestyle and, you know, working arrangements before you launch yourself into this. This will help you choose what type of HubSpot service provider you want to become. More on this topic later here in the video. Let's get to the step-by-step. -step. step number one, get really good at HubSpot. This might sound obvious, but to consult on HubSpot, you need to know how to use HubSpot well. You don't have to be a genius and know all the answers to all possible technical questions, but you should definitely be familiar with the HubSpot, you know, CRM, Marketing Hub, Content Hub, and Commerce Hub. And you should know the fundamentals of automation and reporting too. Knowing how to operate HubSpot is step number one, but knowing how to manage a HubSpot account is step number two. After you know the HubSpot basics, you know how to use the tool, you know the HubSpot fundamentals, you should look into becoming a HubSpot admin. To do this, you need to know how to implement a HubSpot account from scratch, audit an existing HubSpot account, troubleshoot common HubSpot errors, train a team on how HubSpot best practices work, and more. Clients typically need help from someone who can give them directions on what to do inside HubSpot. Because of this, only knowing how to use the tool is really not enough. You definitely need to be comfortable managing a HubSpot account on behalf of a team or business. Whether you need guidance on steps one or two, I have courses that can help you with that. Check out the links in the description below. Step number two, go for HubSpot credentials, but prioritize experience. The HubSpot Academy offers free, amazing courses on marketing, sales, and HubSpot itself. Link in the description below. You should leverage these resources because some of these courses grant credentials you can add to your portfolio and LinkedIn profile. Of course, at the end of the day, actual hands-on experience matters more to a client than credentials. Focus on getting experience as early as possible. You can start by applying for simple gigs on Upwork, for example, or, you know, other freelance platforms, or you can leverage your own job to be exposed to the platform as much as possible and then add that experience to your portfolio. I started out by applying for simple gigs on Upwork. I still remember my very first client was this startup in Germany and they needed help with two HubSpot workflows. And, you know, I assisted them with this short-term project. They ended up liking my work. We got along and they asked me if I could help them with more projects. By the way, this is typically how it goes. Since I started working with HubSpot in 2018, I would say that most of my clients engaged with me because they had like a specific problem to solve, such as fixing bad CRM data or helping with an integration, but then the client just wanted to keep on going after we completed that initial project. Once you prove to someone that you can help them address their HubSpot pain points, so to say, they are very likely want to keep on working with you long term. And this is great because it's basically, it means you don't have to be constantly on the hunt for new clients, which leads me to the next step. Step number three, choose your offering and business model. You can be a freelancer, you can work for an agent, 
agency or in partnership with one or even become a HubSpot solutions partner. Some consultants focus on short-term projects, others on training, and some on, you know, full service retainer work. I know HubSpot professionals who focus on CRM integrations, for example, you know, the techie side of connecting HubSpot with other tools. For example, when I started, I focused on short-term projects, helping marketing teams and professionals learn the tool and troubleshooting HubSpot problems. That worked well because I already had experience in digital marketing. If your background is in IT, for example, you might want to look at the tech side of HubSpot. You can leverage your existing skills and find out how you can build based on that. If you need some direction, go back to the exercise we discussed at the beginning of this video. What do you envision when you imagine yourself working as a HubSpot consultant? If you envision yourself working with multiple clients at once and having flexible hours, you might want to focus on short-term projects or consulting retainers. Now, if you prefer deep diving into a single business and having something more similar to a full-time job, you might enjoy working as an in-house consultant or partnering with agencies. And I don't know, if you love teaching and being with people one-on-one, -on -one, you could focus on training and building online courses like I did. There is no right or wrong approach here, just one that fits your strengths and the lifestyle you want. Step number four, position yourself as an expert. Once you have the skills, people need to know that you exist, right? So update your LinkedIn profile, share your insights, and create content about HubSpot. You don't have to be on every single single platform. Just pick one where your ideal clients are. I chose to create online courses on how to use HubSpot, right? On Udemy Academy. In a certain way, this was and still is my main source of traffic. You can opt for social media instead. Events and networking sessions also work well if you prefer to build presence offline. The more you share about what you know, the more people will trust you're really an expert. Step number five, make your business sustainable. Once you start getting clients, you will realize that managing projects, communication, and client expectations is just as important as knowing HubSpot. Here are a few things that helped me. Setting up efficient onboarding processes, even simple templates help a lot. Prioritizing good communication with the client. This means actually, you know, having meetings to discuss clear, actionable goals, understand internal processes, identify bottlenecks in the work, and more. Having clear scopes of work to avoid endless scope creep. What are the deliverables, you know, and, and what are the deadlines? What is a priority for the business right now? and what isn't. If possible, have a repeatable process that can save you time so you can focus on really helping your clients. So if you're thinking about becoming a HubSpot consultant, start by learning the tool, get hands-on experience on managing HubSpot accounts, start sharing your knowledge online and putting yourself out there. If you want me to go deeper into any of these steps that we just discussed, drop me a comment below. And if you found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next one.